Good morning, everybody. How you doing today? I hope you're doing well. I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins from the Black Business School. Now, I want to talk to you about something real quick that was on my mind. Um, I was um, I got up this early this morning. I guess I was tired from my trip to L.A., so I just slept, slept, slept. And when I sleep a lot, I, you know, I end up thinking a lot while I'm sleeping. You know, I'll literally wake up with, you know, thoughts and ideas and everything else that literally I was swirling in my brain all night long. Um, I've been doing that, you know, since I was in graduate school. When I was uh, 23, 24, I remember doing the same thing. And uh, it is a tool. It's a good tool because your subconscious mind is like a supercomputer that's stronger than any computer on Earth. And what it does is it can take all kinds of data and information and piece it together and uh, and make it more consistent with, you know, whatever it is you, you're trying to accomplish or, you know, the person you want to be. And um, so anyway, uh, before I head out to Kansas City tomorrow on the next leg of the uh, our economic empowerment tour, um, I wanted to share this these thoughts with you um, so that maybe it'll help you kind of think about how, how we can solve problems in our own lives and in our own communities. Um, OK, so here, here's the thing. Here, here's what I was uh, what, what I was processing when, when all this kind of came to mind. Uh, I, w I was thinking about the fact that I decided that I would like to build a school in my um, hometown of Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, and that would be the first uh, school that I like to build. I'd like to build a thousand if I could, you know, um, and that's what I, I mean, ultimately if I can, if I ever get that kind of money, I will build a thousand schools. I guarantee you that. Um, and what I was thinking about was a couple of things. Number one, I was thinking about how inspired I am by, you know, Tim King's Urban Prep Academy and how, you know, King um, has, you know, sent so many young people to college, which I think is a very good thing. Um, and uh, I think it's in addition to that, especially since he's training boys, um, he needs to make sure, I, I would hope, I'm not going to tell him what to do, but my hope is that they would make sure that there are strong, 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 strong incentives for entrepreneurship programs in that school because uh, you don't want all these boys going to college and getting this piece of paper to go into the white man's economic system and then ultimately finding out what many of us other black men have found out, which is that the white man ain't always hiring you, especially if you're an outspoken black man or if you don't fit within their system. Uh, also, even if you do fit in the system, you're not always going to get what you deserve. You don't always get the, the pay that you deserve. You don't get the promotions you deserve. You don't get the jobs you deserve. So uh, I'm a big believer that if a black man wants to be a king, he needs to learn how to build castles. And also the, the last thing that we need in our community are just more successful Negroes. We got plenty of wealthy black people out here who ain't doing nothing for the black community because they don't care about the black community. That that has to be taught. Uh, they also aren't doing a whole lot for anything other than themselves because they don't know how to take their talent and institutionalize their talent, how to take their talent and flip it into an organization which gives you the capacity to hire dozens more black people. So one man's success is not one man's success anymore. One man's success breeds itself into the success of, 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 a, of 100 people or 200 people or however many people he affects in his life. So uh, we have to stop thinking about kind of the one-off model of supporting each other and think of it in terms of broad institutions. So um, anyway, so so I thought about that with Urban Prep, and I, I believe Urban Prep is a great school. I think there should be an urban – I think there should be 20 Urban Prep Academy in every city across America. You know, I think that uh, one of the things I do know about nation building is that you need broad systems to build to build nations. You need a McDonald's like system, except maybe higher quality, of course, but you know what I mean? Like like McDonald's standardized their whole model so that every city you go to, every McDonald's restaurant you see, you're going to get the same level of quality in that food. It's going to be about the same. You know, not, not to say McDonald's is good or bad. I'm not talking about the, the health of the food. We know the food ain't healthy, but, but in terms of the standardized model, um, I think that we need standardization of these models like, like the urban preps. Uh, we should advocate for that. You know, if you're going to go and, and vote for a politician, why not tell that politician we want to have $10 billion so that we can put an urban prep academy in, uh, you know, in 100 or 200 different cities and have 50 of those or 100 of those or whatever number we need to educate black children. We'll have, we'll have a ton of those in every city. And I'm not talking about these charter schools, these Walmart schools, where they're training your child to be an employee for Walmart 
one day. I'm talking about schools that, that allow black children to learn to become authentically, um, you know, critically thinking, uh, productive members of the black community. And those schools are going to come from us. They're not really going to come from corporate money and really even government money. I'm very you know, skeptical of government money. Um, I think it has to come from our money. So uh, anyway, uh, that was one thought that came to mind that kind of led to this to what, I, what I'm about to kind of share with you now. And I know I'm being long-winded on this, but I hope that you can bear with me on this, uh, on what I'm saying here. Um, the, the other thought that I had was uh, I thought about, you know, building the, the school in, in my home city. Um, and I don't, you know, I'm not, I don't pretend to be a school teacher uh, or a school administrator. Uh, I'm not going to do this by myself. I'm literally calling out to, you know, any, like literally, literally hundreds of educators, et cetera, people that are, I'm connected to, to through our platform, Your Black Education, yourblackeducation.com. We, we actually have uh, probably about 20 or 30,000 people that have signed up for that platform, um, mostly educators. And this was a long-term plan, One, you know, because as, as I've always repeated to you guys, Two, two key agenda items that I believe will flip the game for us as a community in the 21st century. One is that every black child in America should be homeschooled, even if they go to school somewhere else. The second is that every black child in America should learn how to start their own business. Every black child in America should learn the basics of entrepreneurship, wealth building, uh, cooperative economics, black business creation, etc. And it has to be authentically, culturally relevant. You know, that's really important. If you raise a black person to be successful and you don't tie in cultural relevance, uh, I mean, I'm talking about beyond the symbolic. I'm talking about uh, substantive cultural relevance. Uh, then it, the person doesn't add as nearly as much value as they could uh, otherwise. So with this school, obviously, you know, this this plan, uh, it, which is still in its infancy, you know, um, uh, it, and it's going to take a while. We got to raise the money and all that. But we're, we're going to basically implement a lot of these values in this process um, because one of the things that I talked to uh, people about, you know, when, when I was talking about this, this, this vision that, that we're all sharing right now is I said, we can't do things the way white people do. Them. We can't sort of create models that are just like what white people do um, and expect to get results that are relevant to who we are and what we're going through. See, you got to understand, black people, our community is at a, at a certain stage in its evolution uh, in, in, our, in, in our American quest for power. Um, so because we have you know, certain needs based on where we are, um, we need to tailor our institutions to fit that. And what, do I, what does that mean? Well, that means that when I talk about creating a school for kids, um, of course, I want to make sure they can, they, that they're very, very strong in reading, writing and math that they know black history extremely well, uh, science, all these other things. But I said there has to be a very strong component of the school that teaches critical thinking skill, leadership skill, uh, as well as entrepreneurial skill. Um, it, when I build a school, every single child in that school is going to know how to run a business. In fact, every single child in that school is going to invest in a business. They're going to create some kind of business. They're going to have some role in a business so that the school can ultimately fund itself. Um, you know, by the school sort of taking an ownership stake. So ultimately, you can you can describe the the, the, the vision as it stands right now, and it's still shaping. It's almost um, an incubative kind of scenario where you're incubating people who 10, 15 years from now. Um, they're not going to end up complaining as much about racism on the job because they're going to know that they have the option of being their own boss. Um, they're not going to complain about wealth and equality for themselves and their families as much or the economic struggle as much because they're not going to equate blackness with poverty. Um, they're not going to sort of look at the economic system as a, a scenario where they're supposed to work hard, go to school so a white man will give them a good job. They will think about education as a tool that will allow them to work hard, go to school so they can either work for a black person or they can create their own job. Um, and, and the reason that this is important is because your economic security is deeply connected to every other dimension of your well-being as a human being in this country, especially as a black person. About 80 percent of the reason that we get so mad about racism on a day to day basis is because we got to deal with some bigot who feeds our children. Um, and, and, and this is a habit that we must get away from. You know, just like America, the president will talk about uh, getting rid of our uh, our addiction or dependence on foreign oil. 
We need to get rid of our addiction and dependence on foreign money. Foreign money means money coming from outside the black community. But in order for that dependence to uh, to end, you must learn to self-sustain, which also means you must learn to self-preserve. That means you don't give all your money away because when you give all your money away, you're going to have to go beg to replace the money that you just gave away because you just need to buy the newest Jordans. So um, to ex extrapolate on this. And this is really, and this is me just, this is the business school professor in me. So, so I think this is the part where I, I hopefully can add value to these discussions by seeing things in a different way. Um, when it comes to institution building, we don't want our institutions to just be black versions of what white people are doing. So, for example, in a black school, it must be created in a way that is specific and unique and tailor made to deal with what black people need. Um, in the quest to create a black Hollywood. I've told you how we're, we're trying to now make films. We're shooting in L.A., New York, and Atlanta. Um, and and I, I told my team in L.A., I said, I said, y'all run, you run your studio too much like the white people do. You run your studio like they do down at Disney and Universal Studios. You can't do that. You can't do that because you can't compete um, against the white man by using the exact same tactics he's using because he's got more firepower than you do. He's got a billion dollar budget. You might be working with a $10,000 budget. If you look throughout the history of the world and you look at warfare, you don't win a war by fighting conventionally against an opponent that it, it, it out, has outmanned you and outgunned you. The American Revolution was not won by the American soldiers fighting the same way as the British soldiers. They had to bend the rules and fight guerrilla style because that was more efficient, more flexible, and more consistent with where they were, what they had, and what they were, you know, what they were working with, what they were trying to accomplish. The Vietnam War was not won, uh, you know, by, by the, the North Vietnamese <laughs> because they were fighting Americans by their rules. The war was won by the North Vietnamese. Well, I'll say this. A lot of people feel the Americans lost that war. Um, the North Vietnamese, Vietnamese, see, I can't even say the word right. The North Vietnamese fought against the Americans with guerrilla style warfare that confused the Americans and threw them off their game. And it allowed them to take advantage of the fact that they were on their own terrain and they could sort of create their own unique strategy that allowed them to fight a bigger, stronger adversary. So as we develop our black Hollywood, we have to go guerrilla style. We have to figure out ways to get a lot done. We, can, we, we need to be able to get as much done with $1,000 as somebody else can get done with $100,000. Um, you know, if you go to black businesses, black businesses have to be funded in a unique way. We can't do the white man's model where you say, oh, well, it takes three to five years for a business to become profitable. And you fill, you fill out the business plan and the loan application. and You take it to the bank and they're going to give you five hundred thousand dollars to get started. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. You try that. Go, go try that. I bet it won't work for ninety nine point nine percent of you. Uh, you have to find creative ways to raise your money. So, for example, Lamar and Ronnie Tyler uh, at BlackAndMarriedWithKids.com, when they needed to raise money for their film, they pre-sold the film. Their supporters on Facebook helped them raise all the money they needed and then some. So that allowed them to make their movie. So ultimately, black people who are able to rise in America's um, economic hierarchy tend to be people who are able to look at the system for what it is and figure out their way around it, right? Figure out their own unique stra uh, strategy and style to help them achieve their goal. So, um, so when we build our institutions, when we're solving our problems, we can't come in it and, 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 you know, with a Eurocentric way of thinking. Many of us are just so poisoned with the, with all the stuff white people have been teaching us our whole life that we don't even know who the hell we are. We don't. We don't. I mean, we measure ourselves based on uh, what white people tell us that we're good at. You know, when you get a Grammy or an Oscar, you then suddenly black people think you're a better actor. You get featured in, you know, in uh, the New York Times or Salon magazine. Then suddenly you're famous. You're, you're respected because Salon magazine recognized you. You get featured on NBC or ABC. Then suddenly you're a successful uh, screenwriter, filmmaker, t television producer, whatever. Uh, they control almost every dimension of our psychological cage. They control every corner of that cage because if they don't let you into their institutions, then you feel like you're nobody. And um, and I and I just remember saying to myself, I'll be damned if I'm gonna let anybody make me feel like a nobody. I worked too hard for that. So I learned how to build my own institutions. 
you know and so what i would encourage you to do is it and what i encourage you to teach your children is how to develop their own your own institutions um understand every institution in this country started off as nothing started off as somebody's idea oh well let's create an award show for hollywood and from the screen actors guild and let's call it or whatever they call whatever that guild is uh and let's call it the oscars and the academy awards and, and we'll make it seem like it's a big deal so everyone will think that it's important that's all they did that's all they did so going back to to the, the original point of, uh, of making this video i just want to help you understand that you know in in the rules of global economic warfare and i'm actually making a list of rules of global economic warfare because that's what we're in we're in war uh people you know be it war if you whether or not you want to be in a war war has been declared on you when somebody says they love you but they but their actions show how much they disrespect you and they neglect you and they neglect the people you care about then war has been declared on you they it's just a very it's such a passive aggressive war that you don't even know that you're in a war um well so one of the rules of global economic warfare is that black people must fight guerrilla style that means we got to be creative. So, you know, so when you see the Boyce Watkins Academy or whatever we decide to call it, when you see that school go up, it ain't going to look like no other school. It's going to be a school that's tailor made and built to uh, to serve the needs of the black community, uh, to create children that are going to um, give the community what it what it needs. And one of the biggest things that that school is going to need is money. But we don't need corporate money because I'm not trying to create a Walmart school. We don't need government money because I don't want to have to live under the, um, you know, the restrictions and regulations of a white supremacist government. It's going to have to be self-generated. Remember, built on the concept of cooperative economics, which means, again, you uh, you stop giving away all your resources and you can serve the resources you have. So that's why every child in that school will be an entrepreneur. Every child in that school will, will be thinking like an investor from the time that they're six, uh, because we've got to shape and create a world that we want to live in. The world that you want to live in, black man, black woman, is not in existence for the most part. Um, you, you can hardly even go to Africa anymore without dealing with the exploitation, not just from European countries, but Chinese countries, you know, Chinese, the, the Chinese now as well are exploited in Africa, right? So so the world that we want to live in, we have to create that world, which means we've got to understand the rules of life and the dynamics of the situation that we're in so we can get what we need to create what we want to see come into action. So that's it. I'm about to get out of here, guys. Um, I'm headed to Kansas City tomorrow for the Black Economic Empowerment Tour. I'm going to speak at the Gym Theater on, on um, April 22nd, and we've got some other tickets. I'm actually going to give a speech, and we're going to do a film screening. Uh, also, we're going to Baltimore on April 28th. We're going to uh, Philadelphia on May May 5th. We're going to uh, Houston on May 15th. I think Dallas and Austin are going to be thrown in there too. I'm, they're, I think I'm waiting on them to seal the deal. And then um, what was another? Uh, New Orleans uh, around the night on the 21st, I believe. And uh, then New York toward the end of May. And then um, uh, Las Vegas, June 5th something like that so anyway go to the dr boyce watkins tour.com to find out more that's the dr boyce watkins tour.com also if you're interested in your child learning wealth building right now in our online program uh, go to black millionaires of tomorrow.com that's black millionaires of tomorrow.com um, i'm serious about this this guys and and i hope that you believe me when i tell you um that i do know for a fact we're going to win this game we just have to learn how to think bigger um think more creatively uh, break a few rules and, uh, you know, cause a little disruption, uh, you know, let go of our need for validation from white people. In other words, stop caring what other people think. All that matters is what you think about yourself. All right, guys, I'm about to get out of here. Talk to you guys soon. Love you. Bye-bye.